What is the probability of pocket aces in four card Omaha? Well, out of the four aces, you choose two. We're ignoring three and four aces as those are much worse. Then out of the other 48 cards, you choose another two. That is the number of combinations of two aces in the numerator. So then we divide by the total combinations of four card starting hands of 52 choose four. The result, two and a half percent or one out of 40. Compare that to Texas Hold'em of one over 13 multiplied by one over 17, which equals one out of 221 or 0.45%. Now we add some fun. Sues. Given aces, so that's in our denominator, and our numerator is how many suit combinations of aces, which is four choose two, or six, multiplied by the number of possible cards not of the suits, or another ace, multiplied by the 12 remaining cards left. The result, 12.77%, or about one out of eight. Good news, we will most likely be at least single suited with our aces. The probability of double suited is actually the same as rainbow. Instead of choosing 12 from another suit and 12 from the last suit, we choose 12 from the first aces suit and 12 from the second. So single suited is now easy as we use the complement rule and find the probability by taking one minus the probability of not getting single suited aces. This also counts the probability of not nearly as good low suit, like two black aces and 10 nine of hearts. Thought I should point that out. So the vast majority of the time, if you have aces, they will be single suited. Aces are my most fun hand to play, but coming in at second place are double paired hands. As you will flop a set one minus parentheses 44 divided by 48 times 43 divided by 47 times 42 divided by 46 and parentheses, which equals 23.43% of the time, or about one out of four. Almost exactly double as in Hold'em, but just not quite. You can most likely win a bet with someone as one might intuitively think it is exactly double, but you can't double count the times you make two sets. You will get dealt two pair in your hand, four choose two, twice for your pair, then 13 choose two for the total combination of different sets of pairs. Divide by the total combination of starting hands and we get 1.04% or one out of 96. Less than half as rare as pocket aces. Now every new PLO player's hands to overplay, double suited. We should expect our results to be a little higher than double suited aces because with double suited aces, we know two of the cards cannot be suited. We get dealt the first card not mattering, the next card matching the first suit, the third card being one of the three remaining suits, lastly the fourth card matching the second suit. We could rearrange the order three times and we end up with our answer of 13.48% or one out of seven. Most of which of course is double suited trash in my opinion, but if you want to play it because it's double suited, go for it. You do flop a flush draw 11 choose two times 37 choose one times two divided by 48 choose three, which is 23.53% or one out of four. Sound familiar? Well, it's about the same as swapping a set. Sets of course being better. With a double suited hand and a made flush, it's 11 choose three multiplied by two divided by 48 choose three, equaling 1.91% or one out of 52. Imagine you are double suited and double paired. You flop a set, flush draw, or flush almost half the time. Not just that, if it's connected, add in straight and straight draws and you pass the majority. Very strong hands. Next up, my third favorite hand to play, suited aces. I omitted pocket aces along with it. The method I used is first finding the probability of getting exactly one ace, then subtracting the probability of that ace being rainbow. So it's counting triple suited aces and monotone aces. It results in 15.01% or about one out of seven again. Another fan favorite, we have rundowns. So four cards in a row, starting with ace, king, queen, jack, all the way down to four, three, two, ace. I also counted ace, king, queen, 10. Ace, King, Jack, 10, 
and ace queen jack 10 because all their straights will be to the nuts. Each can be four suits, so four to the fourth power, multiplied by the 13 possibilities for the numerator, resulting in 1.23% or 1 out of 81. It seems to me everyone's favorite hand, double suited rundowns, will only get dealt to 0.2%, or 1 out of 500. Not a huge part of your playing range, to say the least. Those are the probabilities I have for you. Comment below if I missed any you think would be nice to know. Now we're going to move on to ranges. In Hold'em, a tight GTO under the gun range might look something like this. And I would only recommend playing this nitty if you're new, bad, or at a table full of sharks. If you have an edge on the game, you should expand your range, and the bigger the edge, the bigger the expansion. Notice it is only 7.5% of hands, which makes sense because the chance you get dealt the best hand is 1 out of 9, or 11%. Add in positional disadvantage, and one should open less than in GTO land. Take into account rake, and oh boy. In Omaha, position is even more important. So yes, we should theoretically open less than 7.5% of hands under the gun. Full ring with two blinds, meaning little incentive to enter the pot, should theoretically be a boring game with lots of folding. I constructed a knit slash fish range from under the gun that emphasizes nuttiness, so big pairs and suited aces, which is about 7% of hands, a whopping more than a third of which, because remember you get dealt Ace, ace, XX, 2.5% of the time, should be pocket aces. King, king, 7, 5 single suited would be a fold, and so would queen, jack, 10, 10 double suited. Full ring GTO poker is all business, no fun. Now, I believe a more realistic under the gun range for players watching this video that are winning poker players is something like this at 25%. Now, in PLO, the edges are actually greater, and the game is usually played deeper stacked, where we have more room for an advantage. So this time, going against GTO, we would open more than we would in Texas Hold'em. This is close to my under-the-gun range, and guess what? I am still considered a nit. People play anything, not counting double-suited trash, but single. 90% VIPs from under the gun. If you haven't tried PLO, I highly recommend it as that is where the action is. Now from this range, almost half of the time you will have a suited ace. You want to be drawing to the nuts versus second nuts, for example, and always scoop the pot unlike a straight. Rundowns are good for board coverage and heads up pots, which happens in GTO land, but we're playing in live PLO where pots are so multi-way it's highly overrated. Add in some gaps and it makes it that much worse. Broadway pairs for top set or suited aces for the nut flush. That is where the money's at. There's a big gap between tens and nines because with tens you likely have another Broadway card and will always make the nut straight or block the nut straight. It's similar to high low where pocket eights are much worse than pocket nines because it counts as a low card. Your semi-bluffs, in quotes, will most likely be over pairs with flush draws, but will still have an equity edge over the field chasing wheat straight draws or even weaker flush draws than us. Remember, an over pair with a flush draw is a coin flip against two pair. If you want a full five card version, please let me know in the comments. I'm going to give a short summary here, and I think there are some key differences. One being less bluffing and having it be a more equity-driven game. I reached this conclusion because the main bluff in four-card PLO is the naked ace, but your ace is way less likely to be naked in five-card. Suited aces will also go up in value, as they will pretty much always be well-connected to flop strong straight draws, too, and are ultimately still nutted. Think ace-nine-six-three-deuce as discounted as it gets, Ace-9-8-6-3 being middle of the road, and Ace-King-Queen-Jack-10 as good as it gets. Small pairs are pretty much useless because best case scenario, you're against a wrap and are a little over 50% only. So you really want hands 
that are double paired or no pair at all, or a high pair, of course. Your playable range will pretty much be squarely pocket aces and suited aces. That is it. Just those will still be around 25%. Add in some other great hands, and you've got a well-constructed range. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was pretty fun to make and insightful for me. I hope it was for you as well. Talk to you next time.